All right, so this is one of the questions I posted on our course website. I think this is question number six. Um, so uh, the, the question says basically the following. There are uh, two scenarios, all right? And the decision maker is making choice out of two alternatives in each scenario, all right? So in the first scenario, there are two lotteries, lottery A and B, and he, he declares that he prefers, strictly prefers lottery B over lottery A, all right? So he, he chooses lottery B over A, and he strictly prefers that. This is what his declaration. So what is lottery A? So how should I read this lottery? Uh, it says uh, you're going to get $3,000 with probability 0.25, and with the remaining probability, 0.75, you're going to get zero dollar only, all right? So the lottery is very simple. You either win 3,000 or zero with the respective probabilities. The lottery B, however, uh, offers a $4,000 uh, sort of a gain with probability 0.2 and zero dollar with a sort of slightly higher probability, probability 8. So when he compares these two, he goes with B. Although it's a sort of a, a smaller, slightly smaller probability, the, the, the amount of money is, is much higher, so probably because of this he prefers B to A. Uh, by the way, this is sort of an experiment. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of economists did to actual people. They ask these questions and most of the times people answer it this way. All right, so yeah, go ahead. Well, remember, this is a lottery, all right? So it's not Apple, uh, you know, good Apple, bad Apple, you buy. So you either win $0 or $4,000. Oh, okay. All right? As simple as this, all right? So it's not consuming Apple banana, it's winning $0 versus winning $4,000. Here, winning $0 or winning $3,000. So it's a, literally a lottery ticket, all right? So now in the second scenario, the same decision maker is asked to choose one of those two lotteries, C and D, and he chooses C over D and he says uh, he prefers C strictly over D. So what is lottery C? Well, the lottery C is a, what we call sure lottery. So he wins $3,000 for sure with probability one. So $0 with probability zero, okay? And in the lottery D, all right, so this is a sure lottery. You're going to win three times. I'm going to pay you $3,000 for sure. Right? There's no uncertainty here. Uh, lottery D, however, uh, you can win $4,000 or $0 uh, with the respective probability. So if you see, by the way, uh, lottery B and D are very much similar. The, the, the main difference is the probabilities, okay? But here, although $4,000 is more than $3,000, the decision maker goes for the certain thing. Uh, uh, so he prefers C over D. So the question uh, uh, is asking you to show that or argue that this decision maker cannot be expected utility maximizer, all right? Not expected utility maximizer. Uh, what does that mean, by the way? Uh, so, well, if your utility function is an expected utility function, remember how we calculated the expected utility of a lottery? Well, so therefore expected utility maximizer is a guy who chooses alternatives to maximize that utility function, all right? So therefore, uh, the, the, this, this statement that you are not expected utility maximizer means um, there is no small u function, there is no small u function such that the expected utility of a lottery is equal to summation i from 1 to n pi uh, u of a i for u. All right, so because if you were expected utility maximizer, there should exist some small u where you basically attach utility to each outcome, all right, and then multiply those, you know, utilities with the probabilities, add them up and calculate the lottery that way. And obviously choose the lottery which gives you the higher expected utility. So therefore, 
uh, there shouldn't be exist such you where uh, you calculate your expected utility and make your decision accordingly. So how do we sort of uh, make sure of this? Well, first off, let's start, you know, the argument by denying the conclusion, all right? So suppose there is some u, a utility function over the outcomes. Uh, by the way, what are the outcomes in this environment and what are the alternatives? Yes, this is my question to you guys. What are the alternatives? Anybody? The alternative is going to be B and C right now because you prefer B to A and uh, C to D, right? The alternatives are A, B and C, D. Well, in, in different scenarios, we offer him uh, different alternatives, but A, B, C and D are all the uh, sort of alternatives we talk in this framework. Yes. What about the outcomes? The outcomes, however, the amount of money he's going to win, right? It's either $3,000 or $4,000 or $0. There's no other outcome in this framework, in this example. All right? So therefore, when we say suppose there is some u over the outcomes, which means there's going to be some utility function, which is going to assign some real number to utility of $3,000 utility of $4,000 and utility of $0, all right? So let's suppose there is some such U. What number are they going to assign? That I don't know, okay? Uh, but let's suppose, so remember my claim is that there is no such U. There cannot be such U. But uh, suppose, as an indirect uh, assumption, I deny the conclusion. So suppose there is some u. I don't know the, what they equal to, but let's suppose there is some. All right. And uh, let's go from there. How do I calculate the expected utility of lottery A then? If this guy is an expected utility uh, kind of guy. Well, remember this is a lottery and these are the outcomes and these are the probabilities. So if this guy is an expected utility guy, we're going to just multiply the probabilities, 0.25, with the utility of outcome, which is $3,000. I sort of ignore the dollar signs, okay? But these are $3,000 plus probability 0.75, uh, utility of $0. So this is his expected utility if, uh, if he sort of uh, takes or consumes the lottery A. Similarly, if he consumes lottery or, or sort of takes lottery B, his expected utility should be, therefore, 0.2 probability U of 4,000. Be careful. So this is U of 3,000, U of 4,000. Okay, so I don't know whether the utility you're going to attach to $3,000 is exactly $3,000. Maybe it's more, maybe it's less. All right. So how much utility you attach to money depends on how rich you are, right? Or how, how much money you need at that moment, etc. So it depends on a bunch of other things. So your utility function can be different than, uh, you know, the outcome itself. So 0.2 times 4,000 plus 0.8 times U of zero. Well, another sort of uh, important point, some students just assume for no reason that u of zero must be zero, all right? I mean, uh, you shouldn't make that assumption. Once again, maybe winning zero does not mean zero to you, okay? Uh, um, okay, so what then? In this scenario, remember we said this guy is choosing b over a. So that means if this guy is an expected utility maximizer guy, and if he's choosing B over A, that should mean that his expected utility from B is strictly greater than his expected utility from A. Okay? So this is, um, I mean, for those who already took advanced micro theory probably know what I'm talking about. This is what we call utility representation of a preference relation. And if you don't know, well, this is exactly why I posted some extra uh, lecture videos where you can sort of recover all those the you know, basic ideas. Um, 
So if you don't get this, please look at those extra videos. I mean, you don't have to learn them, but they're going to give you a very good idea about what we mean by, you know, preferences, expected utility, I'm sorry, uh, uh, utility representation, so on and so forth. So it's definitely a worth investment that you should take. Uh, so once again, if this guy's uh, choosing B over A, all right, the lottery B over A, and so he's strictly preferring B over A, and if these are his expected utilities, and finally, if this guy is an expected utility maximizer, he should be choosing the lottery that maximizes his utility, right? Which basically means his expected utility from lottery B should be strictly greater than his expected utility from lottery A. Okay, any question up until this point? Good. So what I'm going to do then, I'm just going to sort of uh, put those guys into here in, in this inequality. So what is expected utility of B? It's this. It's 0.2 U of 4,000 plus 0.8 U of 0, strictly greater than 0.25 U of 3,000 plus 0.75 u of zero. Okay, so what I'm going to do, first off, I'm going to multiply both sides by 100 so that I get rid of these, you know, point twos, point whatevers. All right, so that basically therefore becomes 20 when I multiply all sides by 100. So that becomes 80, that becomes 25, and that becomes 75. Okay, I in fact can, you know, keep going. I can divide both sides by five. I don't know if I'm going to need it. Let's do it. You know, simplifying is always better. So uh, I divide both sides by five. So that becomes four. That becomes uh, uh, 16. Yep. So that becomes five and that becomes 15. Okay. And then finally, you know, I have this U0 term here, U0 term here. So let me take this U0 uh, term here. I have 16 U0 minus 15 U0. So I'm going to get just U0. So Professor here, are you taking five like by yourself? Yeah, well, I mean, as you know, when I divide when I divide both sides of an inequality by a positive number, or when I multiply both sides by a positive number, it does not change the sign of the inequality. So this is the property I'm using. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good question. So then uh, the simplified version is basically five times U3000. I mean, you'll see why I'm making this simplification, hopefully. Okay, so let's leave this here. I mean, case one basically tells me whatever the value of those U's, U3000, 4000, and zero, they should satisfy this relationship. Okay, good. Now I'm going to look at the second scenario and it will basically do exactly the same thing. There are two lotteries, C and D, and he's choosing C over D. So that should mean that expected utility of C must be greater than expected utility of D. So what I should do, I should calculate the expected utility of C and D, similar, and then say, well, U of expected utility of C is greater than uh, D. And so I'm gonna get another inequality and see where I can go from there. Okay, all right, so let's do that. Expected utility of lottery C. Once again, probability times the utility of each outcome. So it's probability 1, U of 3000, plus probability 0 times U of 0. Well, it's 0, obviously, because you multiplied by 0. Expected utility of D, however, is 0.8 times, so this is times, uh, U of 4000, plus 0.2 times uh, U of 0. And so because this guy is choosing C, his expected utility from C should be strictly greater than his expected utility from D. And what does this inequality tell me together with these two? It tells me that U of C, expected utility of, of C is this. Uh, so you can just ignore this. So it's basically U of 3000, strictly greater than uh, 0.8 U of 4000. Uh, plus 0.2 u of 0. So once again, just to simplify it, 
I'm going to multiply both sides by 10 this time. So I get rid of this 0.8 and 0.2. But don't forget to multiply this side by 10 as well. So this shouldn't change the inequality. And once again, I'm going to simplify it. Divide both sides by 2. So this 2 uh, vanishes. This becomes 4 and this becomes 5. All right, so whatever those utility values that this decision maker is attaching, he should also satisfy this. Now, let's look at these two inequalities. The first inequality says uh, 5 times u of 3000, whatever this number is, this is a real number, like 5, 7, minus 8, I don't know, but some real number. But this, this is and this is are exactly the same number, right? I mean, it's u of 3000. So whatever this number is, when I multiply it by 5, in the, in the first environment, it should be strictly less than this summation. And in the second uh, inequality, it should be strictly higher than exactly the same uh, uh, summation. 4 times u4000 plus u0, 4 times u4000 plus u0. So this is clearly impossible. Agree? Once again, here it says, 5 times x greater than something, let's call this y, and here it says 5 times x is strictly less than y. I mean, make your decision, bro. Is it greater than or strictly greater than or strictly less than? Which one? So both cannot be true because these are real numbers, and hence I got a contradiction. So what does that mean? That means uh, the reason of this contradiction cannot be all those because all of those are derived by the assumption that there is some utility function, all right? And this guy is an expected utility maximizer. And so therefore, uh, this assumption should be wrong. False, I mean. Which means this guy is not an expected utility maximizer because there is no such you where this guy basically calculates his expected utility and choose the bundle um, lottery which maximizes his expected utility. That's it. Any question?